It's another night run for the NZ Truck and Driver Test Team as we catch up with Freightline's owner-operator Mark Fletcher and his new Mercedes-Benz Actros 2663 LS and its new six-axle Roadmaster Curtain Sider B-Train. It's loading out of Cardinal Freight in Auckland, bound for Christchurch. It's normal run. Driver John Baker is in charge with some of the freight going on at Cardinal's Weary Depot, then relocating to Mangere for the remainder of the load. Loading starts at 4pm and we don't get on the road until 7.30pm. Not normal for general freight, at least our run out of Auckland will be clear of the 5pm rush. Some of the technology in the new fourth generation Mercedes-Benz Actros includes adaptive cruise control, which maintains a set speed but adjusts it to keep a minimum preset distance of the vehicle in front. Proximity control assist works in combination with the adaptive cruise to maintain the distance to the vehicle in front all the way down to a complete standstill for up to two seconds. If the vehicle in front does move after that time, once it moves, tapping the accelerator resumes the adaptive cruise and proximity control. Active Brake Assist has the ability to initiate emergency braking if it senses a road hazard and works from any speed. Lane Keeping Assist works if the truck wanders from its lane at more than 60 k's an hour without using the indicator and a buzzer sounds from the left or right side of the cab to warn the driver. Attention Assist monitors the driver's attentiveness based on steering behaviour, lane keeping and general activity and activates the lane keeping assist buzzers and another warning 15 minutes later if the behaviour persists or if inattentiveness worsens. Eco Roll works in automatic mode above 55 k's an hour in overrun situations. With the engine brake deactivated, the gearbox selects neutral and coasts to save fuel. Turbo compounding features on the 16 litre engine. The turbocharger uses a butterfly valve in the intake to vary airflow to improve engine response at low speeds. It's also simpler than a variable geometry turbo and passes wasted exhaust gas through a turbine that's connected directly to the rear gear train, aiding power. A crawler function in the AMT simulates an automatic torque converter, allowing the vehicle to crawl at low speeds with zero throttle input. We jump aboard at the BP Papakura truck stop where we fuel up for our run south. It's a good climb up into the cab with four well-spaced steps and great grab handles front and rear of the door opening. And what a door! It's a giant, fully covering right down to the second step. You wouldn't want the wind to get hold of it. There's more service area than a sail in a Team New Zealand yacht. Once in, it's obvious this cab's designed for the driver. Adjustments on the seat and the steering column give an enormous range of adjustment for any body size and shape. And the driver has room all around to stretch their legs with no obstacles. The seat is up there with the best, and with all the gear selection and various function controls on the steering wheel and stalks, everything falls easy to hand, so the armrests make for a very comfortable driving position. Today, John tells us we're running at around 48 tonnes, just a couple of tonnes shy of the truck's 50 tonne limit, so it's going to be a good test. We're fully fuelled and off straight into the southern motorway and the Bombay Hill. We hit the hill at 90 k's an hour and soon drop one gear and get down to 73 k's an hour for a short time before we get up by St Stephen's School where the engine picks up speed as the grade eases. We get back up to 82 k's before losing a bit more speed on the last bit of the climb and drop back down to 71. Through all this, we're only down one gear from top so at 48 tonne that's impressive for a near new engine. As we roll over the top, Trevor drops the box down to ninth gear and sets the engine brake to third of three stages and cruises down to the south side without any brake applications, letting engine revs climb to around 2,000 RPM. The truck is fully under control around 45 k's an hour as we swing off the bottom onto SH27. Anyone who regularly drives on 27 knows it's not exactly a bowling green surface. In fact, there's a real bone shaker in places, but tonight they must have run the rollers over it because up here in the Actros cab it feels like Neither Trevor or rider Dean Evans are feeling anything bumpy. The ride is very good with just a slight floating feeling as we hit some of the more severe bumps. Steering is very precise with no bump steer and a very good feel back through the wheel. The truck positions very easily on the road but if you do wander too close to the centre and side lanes it certainly lets you know as the lane departure warning system kicks in making a noise not unlike running over rumble strips sounding from whichever side of the cab was wandering. Trevor's not changing too many gears, but when he does, it's a crisp and precise shift with a very quick change. Probably our best test of the PowerShift 3's automated shifting is on the Kahiri Hill, 
where you have to drop gears because of the corners rather than the gradient. As we go into the 35 k's an hour uphill corner, the AMT just drops straight down in the appropriate gear, almost unnoticed. Coming out of the uphill corners, the engine delivers nice, lively performance. From here on, it's more the roller coaster road surface, but it's not having any major effects in the cab. Looking around the cab, there's an excellent set of mirrors on both sides, each in a one-piece housing. They're very big, and there's a fair bit of a blind spot to look around. Noticeable as Trevor needs to look around them to check for traffic coming from the sides at several roundabouts on this road. In the upper part of the mirror is a normal larger, flatter mirror with a wide-angle mirror below it, giving great vision down the sides of the trailers, even making cars right down beside the truck visible. The interior finish is nice and light with very functional finishes on all surfaces that look solid and easy to keep clean. And the seats are a nice soft leather which adds to the classy finish. With this high roof model, there's full headroom for a 6 foot 5 driver standing up, adding to the feeling of spaciousness. One of the great advantages of a night test is that we get to try out the headlights and these are amongst the best Trevor's ever driven with. On high beam, the combination of four giant cab roof lights and the headlights turn night into day. It's a nice white light, and it's so impressive we immediately post pictures to our Facebook page. It certainly makes night driving a breeze, but you need to watch out for other road users. We certainly wouldn't want to drive into these, you'd be like a possum in a spotlight. Noise levels in the cab are very low. In fact, all conversation is at normal speaking levels, and when the truck kicks into eco roll mode, when the engine disengages from the gearbox and drops in revs, the only indication is the drop of the needle on the rev counter. This happens when you're cruising along with no throttle pressure and helps deliver the great fuel economy this truck is reputed to achieve. Mercedes-Benz has stated right from the start with this new Actros that it has been developed around the drivers, providing them with the best possible environment in which to perform, and this truck certainly delivers on that promise. It's right up there with the best of the European offerings and certainly makes for an easier life for the driver. With trucks like this, who wouldn't want to be a truck driver? However, many of those technologies we see in this truck are those that will be used to create the driverless truck of the future.